Hello. Welcome again to uh, Small Talk with Centers for New Horizons. My name is Cassandra Townsend, and today my guest is Miss Kristen Nix. Thank Hello. you for having me. Hello, Miss Kristen. Um, our subject today is, uh, we've, we've, we've talked about it before, but right now in the city of Chicago, there are outstanding numbers relating to our crime here in the city. Mm -hmm. So what we hope to accomplish today is to give you our view, um, some options or, or opportunities, you know, to, to look at different items that, you know, may help us prevent some of this violence that's going on. Right. Uh, Ms. Nix is here uh, from the Ada S. McKinley uh, Social Services Agency, uh, who is similar to uh, what we do at Centers for New Horizons, but yes. they have been around. This is your, did you say, 98? It's 98 years. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Well, welcome to Chicago. Thank you. Um, again, this is a live broadcast. We are at the uh, Centers for New Horizons. If you have any questions or comments, our phone number is area code 312-738-1060. Again, that number is area code 312-738-1060. Again, I would like to say welcome to Ms. Nix. So, Ms. Nix, why don't you just give us a little background on who you are, where you're from, and okay. how you came here to Chicago. Wonderful. Well, I am originally from Tennessee. Okay. Um, I moved here in April of last year. Mm -hmm. um, one of my... Um, reasons for moving to um, Chicago was to be a change agent okay. and influence and impact the community in a positive way. Okay. Um, as you stated, there are alarming rates of violence okay. and shootings and gang violence and what have you here. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that with positive influence, with change, um, and building a strong foundation for the youth, that, okay. that can absolutely be eradicated. Okay. There's, there's no question about that. Okay. okay. Um, but essentially, I moved here to um, pursue um, a role in social service, okay. and I'm very fortunate to um, have um, secured a position in social service, and okay. I work with a um, fantastic group of individuals who feel just as strongly as I do about um, building a strong foundation for youth okay. and, you know, ensuring that, you know, you get in on the ground floor of in, instilling positive um, conflict resolution. Okay, and, that's and a just, good point. Just being a being a positive influence in your community, you know, building leaders okay. and and just making change, okay. making positive change. Okay, so. okay. Well, thank you for that. Yes. Uh, I, I'm going to just give um, some of these numbers, and again, we hear this every day on the news. But um, there have been, uh, as of last year, there were approximately 762 murders in the city of Chicago. Right now, today, as we speak, um, we're trending 483 shooting incidents. And those okay. numbers are astronomical. And um, we as a city, we as a community, and we as family have to get a handle on this violence Absolutely. in the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I just want to know, uh, Ms. Nix, do you have like any ideas that you want to share with us on how we may be able to combat some of this violence here in Chicago? Oh, absolutely. Um, I believe that first and foremost, it starts at home, mm -hmm. um, teaching your children um, how to resolve conflict okay. in a positive way, um, teaching them to respect themselves and respect others and essentially realizing how detrimental resorting to violence can okay. be okay. and how it's such a domino effect for every single person yes. around you from your classmates to your yes. family members. Mm -hmm. It can change your life, not mm -hmm. only the, the potential victim's life, yes. but your life as well. Your exactly. life could be gone in an instant. Okay. You know, just by making a poor decision. So okay. really, really learning how to make good decisions and, and good choices when yes. it comes to um, essentially re resolving conflict. Okay. And 
that's that's where I think that's where it begins. Okay. Well, I know um, you moved here from Tennessee. Yes. How is it that you um, prepared yourself? Um, mentally to mm -hmm. come to Chicago from Tennessee and how have you made that transition and, and still being in social services what have been the dynamics there? Right um, there's uh, there was quite it was quite a it's been quite a change it's been somewhat of a okay. culture shock okay. um, you know working and living around so many wonderful people that look mm. just like me okay <laughs> It's of course, you know, Chicago is a very diverse and beautiful city. Mm -hmm. However, there's such a huge population of African Americans and people of color. Okay. Um, and unfortunately, there is a huge population here of poverty stricken okay. um, individuals and um, people who are essentially being negatively impacted by okay. the, you know, systematic economic hardships okay. and. Um, you know, just lack of resources okay. or lack of information about resources. Okay. Um, just preparing myself. Um, I know that I had to essentially allow myself to be more aware okay. of my surroundings. Yes. yes. Um, be aware of just the differences in in how in in how I approach things okay. um, and approach people here. Okay. Um, okay. So those were some of the things that I had to prepare myself for okay. um, in moving here. But it's been an adventure. It's been wonderful. Okay. Um, the city is very welcoming. Okay. Of course, I was very concerned about the violence, yes. but I find that initially I thought that it was being sensationalized. Okay. okay. But Unfortunately, it's it's not okay. Um, but the I think that the I guess for lack of a better word, the um, at the end of the rainbow, okay. knowing that there, there are community resource agencies such okay. as Centers for New Horizons, okay. such as Ada S. McKinley, mm -hmm. and there are so many um, resources just like ours that okay. are available for um, students to have safe havens to. Okay. You know, come in and and you know make make themselves become better people okay. and in influence others. Okay. So that's um, again we're here with Centers for New Horizons. Our address is forty one fifty South King Drive in Chicago six zero six five three. We're at www.cnh.org. Our phone number is seven seven three three seven three. Five seven zero zero. Miss Nix, you mentioned um, resources. Yes. Um, what are some of the resources that um, you know? How do we get the resources or the information about resources out? That's Let's a, discuss discuss that. That's a very good question. Okay. Um, I believe that getting more information or getting information out about mm -hmm. resources okay. is as simple as the things that using the sources that resources that we use every single day. Okay. Social media. We okay. talk to our friends, our family members, our colleagues mm -hmm. through social media and our phones and we're constantly online. Okay. And also as a member of a community resource agency, I okay. think it is imperative that we actually reach out, do community outreach and actually go and knock on doors okay, and actually okay. touch the the residents and people that you want to serve. Okay. You that know? sounds good. So, Again, this is uh, a live broadcast. We're Centers for New Horizons. If you have any questions or comments, our phone number here is 312-738-1060. Again, that's 312-738- one zero six zero. Um, I would like for you uh, again. You briefly, you know, you touched on it, but let's compare Tennessee to Chicago, mm -hmm. and 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 how are you approaching Chicago differently than when you did social services in Tennessee? Because I again, I'm in social services, so mm -hmm. I'm always open to. Right. Um, other suggestions and ideas Absolutely. of things that, you know, uh, again, you just named some things like knocking on doors. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent uh, idea. Right. So what are some of the other things that you've done uh, making the transition from Tennessee 
to Chicago? Okay, great, great question. Okay. Um, well, the social service that I did in Tennessee was uh, more uh, philanthropy. Okay. Um, I actually worked with uh, children after school. Okay. Um, I worked with uh, Boys and Girls Club, worked okay. with disabled um, individuals, and just essentially providing an outlet for them to be creative. Okay. And if they needed to talk about things, I think okay. that sometimes just lending an ear can be beneficial. Yes. Yes. And I found that that works um, in my current agency, okay. just being able to listen because sometimes we find ourselves um, just on autopilot. Okay. You know, when you've been in a position or you've been in a field for yes. so long, you're just, you know, doing what you need to do to make mm -hmm. sure that you're getting, you're, you're in compliance. Exactly. You know, exactly. instead of really actively listening mm -hmm. to what it is that they're struggling with. Okay. And being able to go above and beyond, um, you know, what your job description may be. Okay. And okay. just being, being willing to be used okay. as, as much as possible mm -hmm. for the greater cause, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. which is to, you know, combat violence and combat um, several other um, several other issues that are um, plaguing our communities, such as, you know, literacy issues, okay. education, mm -hmm. and economic hardships yep. and things of that nature. Okay. And again, just going back to the, um, you know, lack of resources, okay. I will say I, I find here that it's, I, I find it amazing that there are so many resources, resources available. Yes, yes, but I at agree. the same time, I still hear people, you know, passers by that that feel that there are a lack of resources. Okay. And I think it's just simply because there's a lack of there's a there's a a disconnect between them knowing where, how to access mm -hmm. these resources mm -hmm. versus, you know, actually utilizing or getting access to okay. the resource okay. so it's imperative that we not as as change agents okay. that we make sure that we are providing equitable and equal opportunities okay. to take advantage okay. of the of the resource yes um i would just like uh, uh to comment on that um mm -hmm. um a couple days ago i participated um with an agency, build invited Centers for New Horizons okay. to attend. It was almost like a um, a forum or youth summit where what they wanted to do, and I know in your research you mentioned build how they've been around doing social services, right. and they primarily work on the west side mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. Chicago mm -hmm. area and. Um, the um, event was called a Black Table event, and okay. what happened there is that we had local businesses, businessmen, mm -hmm. uh, successful. We had uh, congressmen, aldermen, just you know, former NFL players wow. that participated, and they sat with the youth at the okay. tables. It wasn't like there was you know a separation, mm -hmm. and I think that that was um, an excellent forum. That Example. was provided, um, that gave the youth an opportunity to see successful individuals and touch individuals that shared their lifestyles and their backgrounds. Absolutely. So we really, um, to me, I like to see more events like that. Absolutely. Um, That's wonderful. I uh, also would like to see, and I've stated this before on the show, mm -hmm. uh, I would like to see more of our aldermen and doctors and people of these uh, caliber into the schools, you know, um, speaking to the youth yes. and letting them know, you know, again, all, all exchanges with the police department are not negative, exactly. you know, That's so true. we've had them come in and also speak with our youth, let them know that there are programs out there that are through the Chicago Fire Department, the Chicago Police Department. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned the Boys and Girls Clubs. Yes. These are all opportunities that young people have to participate in safe activities. Absolutely. And uh, I would like to see more of the uh, individuals actually out talking yes. to the youth. Because not only does it let them know that they're 
you know, there is a pot of gold at the yes, end of that rainbow. Yes, yes. And it doesn't necessarily... Ha- and, and, of course, there's nothing wrong with an individual aspiring to be an athlete or an mm-hmm, entertainer. Mm-hmm. But it, it it is wonderful when they can see people that grew up in their neighborhood exactly, that are engineers exactly. and architects and You're attorneys right. And, right. and community leaders. You're uh, right. You know, and serving in their community just like we do every yes, day. Yeah. So and it in not only um it 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 not only gives them that hope, but it mm-hmm. encourages them to realize that making those good decisions yes. can can change their lives in such yes. a positive way. Exactly, exactly. You know? Again, this is Centers for New Horizons. Our address is forty one fifty South King Drive in Chicago. The zip code is 60653. Our website is www.cnh.org. Our phone number is 773-373-5700. Again, this is a live broadcast. We are here, Centers for New Horizons. If you have a question or if you have a comment on this subject, give us a call at 312-738-1060. Again, that's 312 312- Seven three eight one zero six zero. Now, Miss Nix, I have a question for you. Um, what is the age group that you normally uh, touch every day? What are the ages of your uh, clients or the social services uh, representatives that you help? Okay. Now, um, as far as the the ag- the agency or the building that I actually work in. Mm-hmm. I work in a Head Start. Okay. Um, so okay. I work with three to five year olds. Okay. okay. However, of course, their parents, you know, range in age from anywhere from nineteen to mm. thirty five. Okay. And okay. Maybe above. Um, so that's that's essentially you know who I'm touching every right single now. Okay. day. You okay. Know? That's um, but I find um, it's it's been amazing how impactful. Um, you know, just being positive and mm-hmm. being encouraging can be with a three-year-old. Yes. Them just yes. seeing you making good decisions, exactly. you um, making good choices, mm-hmm. it it easily influences them mm-hmm. to do so. Children at that age are like sponges. Yes. So they, they see you making good decisions. Mm-hmm. They have an expectation. You okay. set, you help set that expectation mm-hmm. of them making good decisions. Okay. Teaching independence. And mm-hmm. like I said, I work with a wonderful group of um, my, my colleagues are wonderful. Mm-hmm. They I work with a wonderful group of teachers who okay. take time with each of their, each of their students okay. to teach them to be independent and make good decisions okay. and positive um, conflict resolution. Okay. And that, you know, of course, carries on with their parents. Their parents are very involved with the Head Start program. You have to be, that's a, that's a part of being able to take advantage of, okay. of the Head Start program is that you have to commit to being involved okay. um, like in that. their, in their learning, okay. um, in their classroom and making sure that they're, when they go home, Okay. That they're continuing that learning. Okay. Okay. That's an excellent point. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to mention um, a, another agency. Uh, it's called uh, Great, and that's Gang Resistance Education and Training. And um, what this does is it's a, it's a school uh, based if effective against gun violence and violence prevention. So parents, that's one of the um, areas that you can look at mm-hmm. um, to try and keep your child engaged. Mm-hmm. Um, again, we live in um, an extremely vibrant city. We have uh, multicultural activities mm-hmm. here Absolutely. in the city of Chicago. Mm-hmm. So I'm Asking the parents, you know, I know we all have, you know, we're working and busy and you get tired, but we need to start researching some of these activities here in the Absolutely. city of Chicago. And I believe that if the parents and as well as the, the, you know, the fathers, the uncles, the grandparents, if they get more involved, mm-hmm. you know, with these activities, and, and we don't always have to have money you right, know that's true uh i mentor some youth and 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 we just walked around downtown a few days ago oh, yeah. and they said oh we had a, a wonderful time and that man i'm like oh god we didn't even really have a lot of money but right. that was something where they stayed mm-hmm. busy they were off the yeah. street and they had a nice time and we did not right. spend a lot of money again 
We're Centers for New Horizons. We're at 4150 South King Drive, Chicago, Illinois, 60653. Our website is www.cnh.org. Our phone number is 773-373-5700. Again, too, this is a live broadcast, Centers for New Horizons. Call us if you have a question or comment. The number is 312-738-1060. Again, that's 312-738-1060. 1060. Give us a call if you have a question or comment about this subject. Um, another one of the things that the Centers uh, for New Horizons uh, participates in is the uh, Summer Youth Employment Program. And with that, um, we were responsible for putting uh, approximately 500 youth to work this past summer. And I'm really excited, looking That's forward. Wonderful. Uh, to this summer coming up. And uh, again, we have to think about um, what's going on with the youth as far as keeping them busy, mm -hmm. keeping them uh, with some resources in uh, their pockets because they do yes. need resources. Absolutely. And I think that helps to eliminate some of the other activities that they want mm -hmm. to participate in yes. outside. So... Um, the uh, other thing I wanted to talk about, you mentioned uh, Mr. Jamal Green. Yes. Yes, he was a participant in a, in a community town, town hall meeting. And what mm -hmm. Mr. Green stated was uh, there was a systematic economic hardship mm -hmm. and the lack of funds allocated for prevention. Yes. So that's what um, we have to continuously work at, right. making sure there's money. Mm -hmm. um, again, getting out, knocking on the doors, mm -hmm. letting individuals know and letting families know Absolutely. that um, there are resources and mm -hmm. there are things out here uh, for their children to uh, participate in. Absolutely. And it's, it's imperative that not only that they that they are aware of the resources, mm -hmm. but they actually take advantage exactly. of them. Exactly, Because That's you know, it. just like I know, if you're not using the money, you can lose it. Exactly. So it's exactly. imperative that if you have children mm -hmm. who, you know, don't have anything okay. going on for the summer or, or what have you, definitely okay. take advantage of whatever resources are available in your in your immediate okay. vicinity. Okay. And, and a lot of times those resources... Um, are extremely, they could be low cost. Exactly. So don't be mm -hmm. afraid of um, looking into, you know, because you say, oh, I can't afford that. Right. You know, again, this city is multicultural. Yes. There are tons of things that you can do in this city mm -hmm. that does not cost a lot of money. And again, right. they're fun activities mm -hmm. and we need to, um, you know, just stay focused on trying to keep the children involved right. in various mm -hmm. activities. Now, uh, one other thing that I wanted to mention before we close out, Miss okay. Nix, uh, a friend of mine stated that what she thinks that we need to do and what would help with the youth, if we have got to go back to the old way of um, policing our children, mm -hmm. going in their rooms, making sure there's nothing in the room, no guns and, and drugs or things right. like that. Mm -hmm. we, we can't just allow because it's just too much going on here in the city. Again, um, this is Centers for New Horizons. Our address is 4150 South King Drive in Chicago at www.cnh.org. I would like to thank you, Ms. Nix. It has been a pleasure you thank being you. here. I thank you so much for your information that you provided as well as um, your suggestions for helping us to combat some of this violence here in the city of Chicago. We're glad that you're here and thank welcome. You. And you. I would hope that you would come again to our show. And again, I would like to thank you so much Absolutely. for it's been being a, here. It's been a pleasure. All thank right. You. Thank you so much.